Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're tuning in. It's good to be with you as we gather with God and with each other in this shared online way once again. My name's Matt, the Vicar of St John's, and aside from our own session here, over in our Sunday Stars playlist, there's another video courtesy of Lottie, our children's ministry worker. This week, she's looking at how Jesus called those around him to be his friends and his followers. So do check that one out if there are younger ones in your care. That's for our Sunday Stars aged children. And this is coming out on Sunday, following in centuries of church tradition, ever since Jesus' resurrection from the dead on a Sunday, as a day in the week to particularly celebrate and give thanks to God for his goodness to us. I say his goodness. God is well beyond gender. But one of the ways God is revealed to us, one of the pictures the Bible gives us, is that of God as Father. And whilst our own experience of fathers may well be pretty mixed, and the way I'm learning to be a father to my own children is very much a work in progress, I can tell you. God, well, God is presented as the ideal father, the one who loves us beyond measure, the one who we can trust with all we are, the one who can inspire us in the way we help to look after others, and the one who can help to repair and heal us if perhaps our own experience of parental or authority figures has been difficult or damaging. Indeed, on this Father's Day, let's pray and let's ask that God, the God who Jesus encourages us to call our Father, let's ask for his provision, his peace, his presence to be with us today. And so God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us and our world. A love which reflects the very best that we look for in any father figure. Thank you for the assurance, the security it gives us. And if we're lacking in those things today, would you give us your peace, please? A knowledge that you are who you say you are, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Help us today, we pray, to learn from you and your ways. Where our lives have been shaped by those who've had a positive influence on us, may we celebrate and be grateful for their input. May we seek to emulate that goodness, your goodness, by the way we treat and build up those around us. But where our lives, particularly perhaps our self-image, has been shaped in unhelpful ways by others, whether past or present, help us to reimagine ourselves and see ourselves as you see us. Indeed, speak to us today, we pray, that we may picture and plan the things of life, both as individuals and as a community, in the way that you would have them be. Give us the ability to put those pictures, those plans, into practice. And whether that means being productive in good times, persevering through tougher times, or being patient during uncertain times. Would you, God, please be both our provider and our peacemaker, we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, you'll no doubt by now be oh so familiar with the expression, the new normal this shorthand way of describing the changes that we're now obliged to live with for at least the foreseeable future. This new way of doing things, this new normal, 
Well, it's forcing us to reconsider, perhaps, not just how we do things, but also whether we would actually want to go back to the way things were in the years BC, you know, before coronavirus. So, for example, take something as previously part and parcel of everyday life as the humble handshake. Not only was it a standard way to greet someone or to say goodbye or to seal a deal between people, but we're now more aware than ever that a handshake was and still is a pretty surefire way to spread germs. And so whilst we may well miss a a hearty handshake with an old friend, I think the jury's out as to whether or not handshakes actually survive this pandemic and return as an acceptable social custom. I mean, who knows? We may eventually choose as a society to consign handshakes to history because on balance, we'll prefer to keep things as hygienic as possible. Similarly, our new normal will undoubtedly quicken the demise of cash as a payment method in favour of contactless wherever possible. Whilst the widespread embracing of online shopping and supermarket deliveries during lockdown, what has hastened the need for us to reinvent our high streets? Yeah, Primark and others saw queues aplenty this week. Understandably so, having been closed for so long. But business people like Theo Pafitas, well, he's adamant that our new normal means that, in his words, retail will never, ever be the same again. And I think he's right, because too many people's eyes have been opened to new, alternative ways to do things, ways which they may not have previously considered, but which they now realise they actually quite like. You know, as we were saying the other week when we looked at disruption, change can be difficult, can be painful, maybe. But it can also be incredibly liberating, exciting even, as new possibilities all of a sudden present themselves. Indeed, the growth that disruption can bring and the opportunities that our new normal gives us to reconsider whether we would necessarily want to go back to how things were. Well, these are all things which have been on my mind this week, particularly in terms of how we do things as church. Now, whilst I know there are various regulars from St John's who watch these videos, and some from other churches too, if I'm honest, I don't know for most watching whether church in the traditional sense of going to a building on a Sunday has been your regular thing in life or not. And yet regardless of whether we'd say we're a churchgoer or would call ourselves a Christian, actually lockdown's been a great leveller because none of us have been going to church, you know, in terms of the building, for some time now. And yet the interesting thing is that when I speak to people who would usually be a regular churchgoer about how they're doing, and in particular how their faith has been affected by not attending services in a church building. The overwhelming response I get is that actually they're doing okay without it. Yes, I appreciate some will be struggling, you know, particularly when the absence of attending a church has been combined with enforced social isolation. And that is tough, that is tough. But for most people I speak to, they tell me that they found that not only has their faith survived without attending a church building, but in many ways their faith has actually grown during this time. Indeed, it seems by being forced to self-start in some ways, people have generally enjoyed discovering new resources or new online services from all sorts of churches. I mean, what's interesting is that many more people watched these videos than would usually attend a service in St. John's building. You know, something which means these sessions are proving to be accessible to people in a way which building-based Sunday services 
previously haven't been. Maybe that's your experience. What else? Well, I hear stories from people of the ways in which their prayer life has grown in recent months. Often, it seems, because they've been able to make the most of the time they've got to go for a daily walk or sit outside and just enjoy being with God. And for regular churchgoers, ironically, the lack of regular services or activities seems to have been an eye-opener in some ways to the everyday presence of God with them. Finding God is present in the daily routine as much as in a church service. And then, certainly at St John's at least, more people have been speaking to other church folks than they probably would have done were it not for lockdown. How? Well, the way we've been able to get an extended team of people together to phone pretty much every church member every week, that's built new and strengthened existing friendships. What else? Well, as we've been saying in recent weeks, again for us at St John's, we've seen our ability to offer practical help to our community and partner with other local organisations you know, that ability, that partnership has, has vastly increased during lockdown. Certainly more than would otherwise have been the case. Not only is that a good in itself, as people's needs are met, but that frontline help has felt vital in the sense that it's, it's vitalised my faith. You know, I've loved it. I've loved it being hands-on. And I know the faith of many others who are either sharing in or supporting or receiving that help has also been strengthened. And then in terms of sung worship, well, various folks have been saying for some time how nice it would be to have the St John's Band do some recording. And here we are, you know, lockdown's given them the chance to do it. And our worship songs playlist here on YouTube has, I know, been appreciated by a whole host of people. The intriguing thing is, I think, in all of this, that, that God has been abundantly present in people's lives in new, exciting ways, despite, or perhaps even more radically, because of our inability to meet as a church in our usual building, in our usual way. And yet, alongside all of these positives... The one overriding negative of not being able to use our church building, the one thing that there seems to be consensus on from all those I speak to, is that people are missing seeing other people. Now, more than anything, people have missed spending time with others, having conversations, face-to-face -face contact, laughing together, catching up over coffee, eating together, sharing stories, you know, stories of life, yeah? but also stories of how God has been active in their life, sharing the things they've been learning, things they're discovering afresh about God's involvement with them. They're missing the chance to pray with other people in person. Yeah, it can be done over the phone, perhaps, but it's not the same. People have missed being present for the stuff of friendship, the stuff of community life. Now, on the one hand, that might sound pretty obvious. You know, of course, we'll be missing seeing people. We're social creatures designed to function in and belong to a community. But what struck me is that knowing now more than ever that that's the case, that we long to be with people. Well, it's a truth which surely needs to shape the way we do church in our building from this time forward. I mean, think about it for a moment. On the first proper Sunday, when we can come back and meet in our church building, whenever that will be, there's no way I want to get up in front of people and, and tell them to quieten down because we need to start our service. Now, people, quite rightly, they'd say, leave it out, man. Come on, do us a favour. Look, we haven't seen each other for months. We want to talk. We want to catch up. We don't really want to listen to just you speak. And so, yeah, we might 
want to make time to sing a few songs together if, if that's allowed. We might pray together as there's certainly something powerful in uniting with others in prayer. But would we honestly want to sit neatly in rows, not really talking to each other for an hour, an hour and a half? Nah, of course not. Would we want to sit through one person delivering a sermon, you know, a sermon we could quite easily listen to in our own time at home via YouTube? Again, I severely doubt it, especially if it was me who was preaching. Now we'd want to hear from all sorts of people, news, stories, testimonies of the difference that God has been making in their lives. You know, whether that was short snippets up front or deeper conversations we'd have with folks one on one or in smaller groups. We wouldn't be satisfied with just having a quick cup of coffee at the end. No, we'd we'd want to have lunch together, you know, to extend that time of togetherness all we could because we'd missed it. You know, especially for me. If it meant a bunch of us migrated down to the Vic mid-afternoon to carry on the get-together down there. You know, in my head, I kind of picture church at its best as being like the end of a, a story, a parable which Jesus told. A parable about a son who left his home to go and experience the world. And yet, once he'd got all of that out of his system, he realises that above all, he misses his family. He misses his home. He missed his friends. He knew what mattered to him most. And so, slowly but surely, we're told he made his way back to his father. Now, on his son's return, What did that father do in the story Jesus told? Well, he didn't simply treat his son as if he'd never been away and go about his everyday life just as he had before. No, No, it wasn't business as usual. Instead, he celebrated like crazy. He realised what he'd been missing, who he'd been missing. You know, he partied, he rejoiced. He spent as much time as possible in his son's company because now they were together. Everything else could wait. And you know what? It strikes me that when we can meet together as a church or whatever community or social group we might be a part of, we've got an opportunity to learn from this parable of Jesus's, to learn from the lessons of lockdown and therefore prioritise our time together accordingly. So for me, well, I want to celebrate with people. I want to eat and drink with people, to talk and pray and share with people. I want to learn from their experience, you know, to be encouraged by their stories of the ways they've seen God in action, to be inspired by their faith, to plot and make plans with them under God for how we might grow in the ways we might be a blessing to our community and more. That's what I want. Maybe you do too. You know, I want church, my church, our church, the church, to increasingly be a place of friendship, of fellowship, of food, of faith in a God who has made us to be in community, who has made us to be in communion with him and with each other. And if that's my hunch for what we would appreciate most on those opening weeks back together, then it strikes me, why couldn't, why shouldn't these principles shape the way we do church from here on in? Yes, there'd be a need for us as a church to offer space for quiet, time for reflection, time to grieve where necessary. And yes, there'd need to be opportunities for the introverts among us to not feel overwhelmed and so on. But there's no reason why that kind of time couldn't be built into our Sunday evening gatherings, for example, 
or at least put pockets of that time, corners of that kind of space, into Sunday mornings. And yeah, I'd want to continue these YouTube things in some way, even if we could resume meeting in person. Because if this is a more accessible way for more people to have some input in their own time, in their own way, in their own pyjamas even, then my hunch is that God has helped us to stumble across something which can both complement and free up some of the precious time we actually have in person with each other. You know, the gift of being present with each other, with God, Sunday by Sunday. That's my kind of church, a mixed one, yeah, but primarily a community church to which everyone can belong, to which everyone can contribute, and from which everyone can receive. A church which loves God and celebrates the ways in which God's love is at work in people's lives. A church which serves its community and seeks to share God's loving kindness with all who would receive it. And so, as we pray, God, on this Father's Day, would you, our Heavenly Father, would you help us to know, please, your guidance, your embrace, your passion for the way ahead, we pray. Would you raise us as a parent raises their child to know how to get the best out of this life which you've given us? To know how to do our corporate life, our community life, our church life in ways which reflect your ways. Keep us from rushing back too soon. But keep us from lagging behind too. Give us what we need or when we need it. Give us vision and imagination which comes from you so that we can do things at the right time and so that we can be a blessing to you and to each other and to all those who you've given us to share this life with. Amen. We're going to play a track recorded this week by the St. John's Band called Who You Say I Am. It's a song which picks up the language of God as a father, language which therefore makes us his children. There's a freedom, I think, which comes from that identity, both in terms of how we might relate to God, but also how we might relate to one another as brothers and sisters, you know, children of God. And so as this track plays, you might want to use it for your own prayers of thanks to God. But also, can I suggest we use this time to offer up to God all that we've been beginning to think about today in terms of what it means to be church together. Grace. 
All right, that's nearly it for today. But one final thought before we go and pray for God's blessing to go with us. You'll be aware that we've been using this drawing of St John's Community Church in these videos over these past few weeks. A drawing of our church building which was done by a local artist based in Birmingham called Tracy Flynn. F-L-Y-N-N. Tracy Flynn. I really like her work. Indeed, do check out her website, artbyflynn.com, if you do too, as there's a whole host of her pieces on there. But I was keen to get her to draw our church building because the technique she adopts is to draw buildings and scenes with just one continuous line. And so if you look closely, every part of this picture is made up of one continuous, unbroken line. Now, not only is it very clever, but for me, this church building picture symbolises what church as the people should be about. A people who are joined together, where everyone is connected in some way to everyone else, where there's a, a common chord which unites us, a direct line through which God's spirit flows and shapes our common life together. And so my prayer is that whether we're connected in person or whether we're connected online, we would each know the sense of care and continuity that comes from being in line not just with one another, but ultimately with God, the original artist, the original creative force behind our common life together. Indeed, with that in mind, and until next time, let's commit ourselves to God and to one another by asking for God's blessing to rest over us. And so, may the blessing of God Almighty the blessing of the God we know as Father, Son and Spirit. May that blessing rest upon us and all those we connect with and live alongside so that that same blessing of love might be shared among us, both now and always. Amen.